This is Marcus Corval with Studio MMA and MMA Nut, and uh, we are here with Camacho LaRouche, where you just finished your last day of hard sparring, as you can as you can tell here, um, and uh, you have one week, not even six days to your fight. Uh, how do you feel where you are today, and and how this training camp went? Uh, thanks for your time and thanks for help me in this fight. Was First, I feel great and I had the best training camp, good team, good coaches, and everything's perfect. My weight is good. I'm super, super ready for this fight. And Monday, I'm flying to Nashville, just a couple of pounds, 10 pounds left to lose my weight. And I'm excited. Uh, we spoke a few months back and you told me about the warrior diet. Uh, we did an interview with when we started talking about it. And I was, I hadn't heard of it before and I was a little bit skeptical to it. Um, when it comes to diets and training, I'm a bit of a nerd and I research. And there's actually a Swedish uh, nutritionist who also came up with something similar. And I've learned to, to respect the diet a lot. But this was the first time you did this diet for a fight. How did you feel throughout this 10 weeks that you've been training for this fight? Uh, my conditioning coach, his name is Chad Waterbury. He did a version of warrior diet. Mm -hmm. So this is the Waterbury diet. Ah. Because he add more supplement, because we train like four hours, five hours a day. Yeah. And I eat once a day, like fasting, like Ramazan but big feast, or I eat whatever I like. But morning and noon time, I take some supplement to recover, you know. I've, I used to walk around 188 pounds. No, I lost. You fight the 155, that's yes, a lot. Yes, and then losing weight, you don't have the same performance when you fight day because you don't have no energy. But now, I'm 165. I have more energy than I was 188. I feel much better, you know, it's amazing. And obviously I've, I've been part of the camp and I've seen the guys that have been brought in, you know, just been high levels of every part of the game, so to speak, from wrestling to kickboxing, boxing, jiu-jitsu. Um, and you get tested, obviously. That's what you're supposed to be in, in your training camp. Uh, and one of the, your bread and butter is wrestling and we see what you do with people. Uh, for people that don't know, you can see in the documentary about you as well, uh, what, you know, what you do with high-level American wrestlers. Um, but all around, you've, you've, you've changed a lot. You've come a long way from the commercial LaRouche that we saw to where you are now. Uh, and you ooze a, a self-confidence uh, and an anxiety to get in there and fight. Do you feel like you're going in there to to test the new Kamal inside of the cage? Yes. In this fight, I'm taking new Kamal. Very technical, very smart, and my striking, my wrestling, even my grappling, much better. I'm in good shape. I'm absolutely, absolutely different fighter. And I'm and very dangerous this time. People, they have to watch out. I think uh, you've always been considered very dangerous. You're tough, you're strong, you punch hard, um, but you've added other dimension to the game. And also your, your training in itself. You spoke about the diet. Your diet is too many controversial. It's different from what a lot of people do. Your training in some ways is very is, is controversial as well. Uh, again, back to the documentary, we can see you running on the water, holding your breath, a lot of yoga, a lot of meditation. Do you feel it's a big aspect of, of mixed martial arts or is it just a big aspect of Kamal Shalarus? Uh, I'm very spherical. I like to, to you know, get my energy from nature. I believe and then I, you, get, you get more focus because like fighting like samurai, if they do one mistake, you lost. Yeah. Uh, of course, the samurai, they're losing life, but we're losing <laughs> a fight. It's still one losing fight is big, you know, yeah. you can put your record down. At this level especially. Exactly, and that's why I try to be meditate, get more focus, and 
breathing control and training so many different the training underwater do yoga run in the beach go to mountain i believe that and helped me a lot even to recovery i be calm i save my energy more and uh, looking at you as, as a person you, you you're the first persian iranian uh, ufc fighter in the ufc you represent iran when you fight your your nickname is prince of persia um, but for people that don't know about Iran, you are from the mountains um, and as far away from a cage and from the UFC and the limelight as you can get. And that's where you started. Tell us a little bit about your upbringing when you grew up. Uh, I grew up in North Iran, Azerbaijan. We are farmer and sheep herder. Simple life, you know, just we used to, you know, deal with wolf build up own house and then provide own food. Such a beautiful life actually, you know, no stress, but different, you know. I love this life and that life too, both, you know, because you, you see both sides, you know. Do you still go back to visit? Of course, my family still, they live there, my mom, but my brother, they moved to the bigger city. So only my mom and one of my brother, they, they still live there. After my fight, I'm gonna go see my mom, help her to fix her house. And when I moved to United States, I just loved MMA, you know. I like talent. And of course, in your life, every minute is talent. So I grew up, I learned that way. You said wolves, did you ever get to confront the wolf? Oh yeah, many. Did you fight the wolf? Many <laughs> times, many, many. Fight wolves? Yeah, because wolves try to come eat my sheep. And then I have to save my sheep. How? With a stick and my dog. You off? You fought off wolves with a stick? Yeah, yes. Double leg takedown? No, <laughs> with a stick. <laughs> Double leg is not working for wolves. They bite your hand, man. <laughs> Are you scared? No. And you also grew up in, back to Iran, in, in a war-torn Iran. Yeah. There was the Iran-Iraq war, there was, there was a lot of turbulence. Um, being in Azerbaijan, which by the way for, for our Swedish viewers is also where Hamid Akira Khorasan is from. Um, did that affect you growing up? Was it something that you saw? Um, no, we are, uh, we, we live a uh, uh, safe from, I, m I didn't see the war because we was like mountain, nothing there, no factory, no big government facility to war affect us. Right. But so many of my friend, good friend, they went to war and then they lost a life. Of course, you know, yeah. war is bad. War is always bad. Sometimes necessary, but, but, but always bad. Yeah, war part. always bad. And you, you now partake in pro professional warfare. Uh, how do you see the fight? How do you see it from, from the dressing room to walking into the cage to the gate closing and the referee is saying, ready, are you ready? Let's fight. Uh, I visualize my fight maybe hundred times and all, of, all the time I see my hand is raised up. That's nice. And how, how do you see yourself as a fighter? Are you calm when you walk out there? Nervous? Anxious? What, what gets you going? Do you, do you want to be pumped <coughs> up? Do you try to stay calm? Like if I give you two examples and you put Kamal Shalarus in between, are you more like Fedor Melianka who's going in there stone cold or more like Someone like uh, we have now Ben Henderson, who's going to be fighting for the title at the same weight class as you, who comes in and talks about how he gets pumped up by the, by the crowd. And you can tell as he gets closer <coughs> to the cage, he gets more and more pumped. Where's Kamal Shilarus on that scale? Uh, I think I'm more calm, but when I, they, I hear they close the gate, I become animal. And I see everything's red. Anything's move, I want to destroy it. And as we see it, your last fight was a war and, you know, it's a lot of emotion from you inside of the cage, which is very different from who you are outside of the cage. Yeah. It's come out, you know, we can tell the truth. A couple of times during training camp, it's come out, we've seen it in you. That, <laughs> but it's not a bad thing, actually. Yeah. It's, 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 it's something that, you know, it's anxiety and frustration and dieting, everything, every yeah. fighter has it. Um, but uh, from who you are outside of the cage, 
you're such a nice guy, you're so calm, you're, like you're talking about being spiritual, you do yoga, me uh, you, you meditate. Where does the switch turn on? Where, is <laughs> where does it come from? Just don't lock a cage on me. <laughs> <laughs> if you lock a cage on me, I become animal. If you leave a door open, I'm, you're going to beat me all day. I'm not going to say anything. But if you like a cage, <laughs> don't lock. I'm going to become animal. So a caged animal. Cage Kamal animal. Yes. That's bad. Kamal animal. That's a good name, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so um, you've, you've worked with uh, some very technical coaches in the game. Henry Akins, who's, you know, Hicks and Gracie the greatest of the greats, jiu-jitsu, very, very technical. Anthony Hardong, also very much into the philosophy of fighting, who also come, and you spoke about it, you're more of a technical yeah. fighter. Is it of a concern that once that cage locks and you get hit a couple of times and that, uh, that emotion is gonna take over? Or is that part of the game? No, uh, this time, actually, I have a t uh, three more coaches. Chad Waterbury, right. Coach Salko, and Tamal. Those and what does the Tamal do, for example? Tamal is my yoga coach. He's my uh, meditate and help me to like, breathe and then stay calm. Coach Sako helped me in my wrestling. And From Golden Boys, right? Golden Boys. And Chad Waterbury, he helped me a lot. My conditioning, my nutrition, he support me a lot. No, this time, actually, I work on a lot. I want to be like always calm and fast. Don't be animal. I want to be almost control my motion, but good technique. Mm. So I'm going to be different. That's we try to take the new Kamal inside the cage. And your opponent, uh, obviously, I can say we 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 know who he is. We know what he does. He comes in with a perfect record, 16 and zero. But still, we know very little about him. He comes from Russia. There's not that much footage mm. on him, uh, but we know he's a sambo specialist. Uh, your wrestling is obviously your pedigree, uh, but what, talk a little bit about your opponent without going into the game plan, but you know, yeah. from what you've seen. And uh, of course, he's a great fighter yeah. and he's young and then he has a good wrestling. He don't like a strike, but nobody knows. Every fight, people, they change, the yeah. fighter change. Yeah. I, as anywhere fight go, I'm ready for this. I have a better striking, better wrestling, and better ground game than him. And he thinks that way too. So who's better that day? Who's gonna mistake? They're gonna pay off. But I'm ready. I'm 100% ready for this fight. And I've, I know you are. I've been there and I know you are. Um, and, and we're seeing now in the UFC, obviously the Ultimate Fighting Championships, going outside of the United States to you know, research other markets, such as you know, Sweden, they're going there on April 14th, Japan, Brazil this year. Um, but not just that the UFC is going outside of the United States. We're seeing a lot more. We're seeing a lot more international fighters coming in, like yourself, representing Iran. And he, this, uh, you said you had problems. It took you two weeks to learn his name. I still can't pronounce his name. <laughs> um, but he's coming in from from Russia. We're seeing a lot more international fighters, uh, and with international fighters, we see new styles of fighting. Uh, do you think in the long run it would change? The mixed martial arts scene? Yes, because the level is going to go more up like Olympics. So many great athletes from different countries are going to come, then sport growing big, getting bigger, bigger till Olympic level. Like five years later, you're going to see so many great fighters. They will ever, they're good in wrestling, striking, jiu jitsu. This sport is getting better, better. Talking about the Olympics, do you think we'll ever see mixed martial arts in the Olympics? Well, bec uh, the one thing, one problem in Olympic, you don't get paid, but yeah. in MMA is money involved, so it's going to be a little bit difficult. So I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. I don't know. They know the who's run this business. They know better than me. Uh, you've been on the international scene a long time, wrestling. When it comes to Olympics, you wrestle people from different countries. Uh, I know myself from boxing uh, and kickboxing that a lot of times you can just watch someone shadow box and you know what country they're from. You can see someone box and say, that's a Cuban, that's a Russian, that's a Mexican from the style of fighting. Is it the same with wrestling? Absolutely, exactly from even how they start to do drill, 
when they go single leg attacks or double, you know where it comes from. So you have obviously competed in wrestling yes. against Russians, because Russians yes. are some of the best wrestlers in the yes. world. Um, sambo and wrestling, talk to us a little bit about that. Do you see sambo fighters coming into wrestling? Have you wrestled, have competitions in wrestling versus fighting sambo fighters? Yeah, of course, wrestler gonna, if it's wrestling match, wrestler gonna win. If sambo match, sambo gonna win. And uh, do you feel that you have an advantage from having the international experience knowing how Russians, their certain style of fighting, Absolutely. when it comes to the grappling style. Absolutely. I can close my eyes and feel his takedown. Nice. Does that give you extra confidence going into the fight? 100%. What do you know about Nashville? I heard this beautiful city, music city, and nice. I love it. I used to live in Austin, Texas, similar to Austin, Texas. So you land on Monday, fights on Friday, you've got five days there. Who in your team is going to be out there? Who's coming with you? Uh, my coaches, Anthony and Henry going to be there, and Nima, Mazahari, other my coach from Kaizen MMA, my manager, Nima Safapur from Alchemist going to be there, my sparring partner, Marcus going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and I have so many friends, they're going to fly out there. Nice. So big group, it's going to be amazing. And I can't wait, after my fight, I'm going to have a after party there. Go after to, party? Yeah, I'm mean eating after party. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just, just got some, some sad news. Um, Reza Madadi, my dog, who you know very well and you know his family, you know his brother, uh, who we were excited to, to see in the UFC as uh, in one of the Swedish fighters representing, but also from a, from a Persian heritage, from an Iranian heritage. Unfortunately, he won't be able to make this fight out now. Um, he, uh, I presume, I'm pretty sure that Reza would love to be on the Sweden card instead in April. Um, tell us a little bit about Reza, since unfortunately the US crowd won't be able to see him on there uh, on, on Friday. Uh, Reza, he's my best friend. We train a lot. He came in my last fight, helped me. And then his brother is my good friend. I know him a long time. So we like brother. And I'm sure you, anybody see Reza fight, they're gonna enjoy. He always show exciting fight. And I'm, I'm sorry too, he couldn't find the same show because give me more courage. Right. We fight next to each other. Yeah. But um, hope he fight in UFC, UFC in Sweden. And then all the best for him. And uh, were you foreseeing training with him before the fight in, in Nashville? Yes, yes. His Reza, his, he, his opponent, no chance. Reza is going to destroy his opponent if a fight happen in Nashville. And Reza also obviously comes from a, from a wrestling background like yourself. Have you guys ever wrestled? Yes, we wrestle a lot. Competitively? Because so you're the same weight class. Yeah, same weight class. This is the confidential. So we, I can't say my friend. He beat me, I beat him. Reza is a good wrestler, very good wrestler. I done so many wrestling match with my, even my brother. I done wrestling match with my brother. You competed brother. against your brother? Yes. Did you beat him up? No, I lost my brother. <laughs> Is it your older brother? My older Is brother. It's a psychological barrier, right? You yeah. always get beaten up by your older brother. It's yeah, he used the special technique. So he slapped me, I freeze, <laughs> and then he took me down. <laughs> I thought I done something wrong, you know? And I was like, look at him, and he take me down and pin me. <laughs> um, did you see the movie Warrior? No. This, you know what it's about, right? Two brothers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fight, that, But you didn't see the, the movie? No, no, I've seen it. You is did it, see it? Yeah, I see it. It's amazing. I love it. You love the movie? Yeah. Uh, but your brother didn't go into mixed martial arts? No. He's, he's a wrestler. He's Guru Karoman. He's a great wrestler. Uh, is he interested? Would it be something that he would be interested in doing? Or uh, too no. late? Too, too late. late. In career? Yeah, too late. He have a family and then um, he living. He's He's good. All right. For you guys that haven't seen the documentary with Kamal, make sure that you uh, tune into it. You can see both in English and in Farsi, right? You did it yes. in two languages? Two languages. How many languages do you speak? My uh, first language is Azerbaijani. Which is that, different from Farsi. Yes. Very different, completely Ve different? Completely different. And then I learned Farsi in the school. And because I'm from Iran, we speak Farsi, of, of course, the and then English, 
And I study four years Arabic. I know Arabic 50%. Can I Arabi? Take a look. Shwai. Shwai. Mashallah. Alaikum assalam. And then now I'm learning Spanish. Spanish? Eh, much, much, obrigado. I don't know. That's Portuguese. I know. I'm learning. You're learning. And that's my first class. That's your first class. So you got today, you've done with the training. Tomorrow I know you got some yoga. Fly out on Monday to Nashville. Uh, and Friday, tune in to FX, Fox. How excited are you for this fight? I'm so excited, honestly. I wish I could fight right now. No, 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 no more fighting. No, no. We're, we're done for today. Are you Khabib Nurmagomedov? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Swedish, man. <laughs> Come on. Okay, thank you, brother. Thank you. We're going to see more from Nashville. We'll do some more filming from down there. And make sure you tune in on Friday and watch Kamal. And When it's tight on the fence, I'll be the challenger and the canvas sender. The one that stands in the center with arms raised. My conquests are like the Romans, victorious. War with gods, cause I was chosen. Like the steer of Medusa, once it's cast, I'll leave you frozen. Stone cold, motherfucker, I'm seeing through you. And the weak competition, so fuck your crew too. I'm coming, and know the hell's coming with me. Walk in the war path, they'll talk about me for centuries. By my own hand. You train hard and then you make a game plan how you want to fight, you watch your opponents, so how you wrestle, how you fight. And your coaches make a game plan and you go with game plan to fight. And my, you know me, I always listen to my coaches and say, okay, this is the game plan, we're going to do that. And then when fight is start, game plan come next to me and say, okay, come on, you stay, everything's on me. We stick in the game plan and we fight. And then when I start, I said, no, you stay, let me ideal this. And then I start doing my crazy punching game plan and say, you handle it, fuck this, run away. <laughs> That's my philosophy, man. No game plan, just fight. <laughs> well, I have, my life story is kind of crazy. I used to live in a small village north of Iran, Azerbaijan, called Hero, my city called Hero. We are farmer and sheep herder. Simple life, you know, just we used to, you know, deal with wolf, build up own house and then provide own food. Such a beautiful life, actually, you know, no stress, but different, you know. I love this life and that life too, both, you know, because you, you see both sides, you know. Do you still go back to visit? Of course, my family still, they live there, my mom, but my brother, they moved to bigger city. So only my mom and one of my brother, they, they still live there. After my fight, I'm going to go see my mom, help her to fix her house. And when I moved to United States, I just loved MMA, you know. I like challenge. And of course, in your life, every minute is challenge. So I grew up, I learned that way. You said wolves. Did you ever get to confront the wolf? Oh yeah, Did you many. Fight the wolf. Many times, <laughs> many, many. Fight wolves. Yeah, because wolf try to come eat my sheep, and then I have to save my sheep. How? With a stick and my dogs. You fought off. You fought off wolves with a stick. Yeah. Yes. 
Double leg takedown? No. <laughs> With the stick. <laughs> Double leg is not working for wolves. They bite your hand, man. <laughs> okay, guys, today is my last day sparring day. Be careful. Speed and technique, don't cut me up or don't give me injuries. It's the last day. Okay, let's do this. So, uh, no. Cut here, sir. No cuts, no cuts, no injuries, okay. okay. I just tried to help you out, man. You told, he told me he liked girls, they like the cut. That's why I give him this. Thanks, I appreciate it. Come on. Thank you, man. Okay, now on my signal. Keep jogging. On my signal, we face the melee fighting stance with a left leg, repeatedly a push kick. Okay. Keep the hands up, keep the chin down, pull your knee up and then kick out away from your body. There we go. Hi! Left leg. My first uh, step up, to mix martial arts. I wrestle all my life, you know, and then wrestle right and then after some whiles, I just tried to learn something new and then because we had a wrestling, good wrestling team in the UK and then a couple of people they came and they take the wrestling classes with me and then I saw them, they, are, they never wrestle. They don't know the technique perfectly but they are super athlete and then they learning very fast and I say yeah these guys they are mixed martial arts, they fight in the cage. I said, what, what is that? And they said, oh, next weekend there's a fight. You want to come with us? I said, of course. And then I went to see the fight. I see amazing, so many sports mixed. Kickboxing, boxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu. That time I don't know what does mean jiu-jitsu. And then I love it, to be honest. I liked it. So I say, well, I can do this. And I moved to the United States, Texas. My first fight, I sign up to fight. And then they say, come on, you want to fight in amateur? I say, no. I want to fight pro, and I, fight, I want to fight the who have a title for Walter Wright. I say, no. That's, I say, yes. I'm world-class wrestler, and I'm fighting with the US champion. And OK, they say, let's make it happen. And I fought my first fight for Walter Wright title and I beat my opponent 35 seconds. And then from that I say, okay, I like this. I love to train all the time. I want to be fit and become MMA fighter. I put full my time for training MMA. Educate myself to learn better. Jiu-Jitsu, striking, wrestling, yoga. It's amazing, such a big world. You know, people, they think MMA fighting, just sprawling, punching, kicking. No, it's a big education. You're learning a lot, discipline, culture, friend, communication. It's amazing. Any, anywhere in the world, if I go Sweden, if I go Iran, Dubai, Brazil, UK, Russia, I have a friend. We are like fighting family. And then we respect each other. We help each other and look like we know each other a long time. There's some connection in this sport. I don't know what is it. Yeah. We beat each other up and after that, say, that was good, huh? And enjoy. <laughs> I want to take you guys to secret, secret place. All the Armenian, Russian, Iranian and Tajikistan, the all the best wrestler. Come in. Come inside, guys. He says Ali, he just he had a big tournament. He came second in the nation, but he broke his arm. Otherwise, he's going to be his number one. He's the future world champion, Olympic champion. What are you doing here? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. My background is a, I'm a wrestler and then I surprise everybody. They think, come on, I'm going to wrestle. But, you know, I like fight. When I fight, if people strike, I want to strike back. I like pound them pound. So 
I go where I go anywhere fight go. But now I can bring my wrestling back too. So because so many my friend and my fan they ask me, come on, show you wrestling. Okay, I am going to show wrestling. I'm going to show you big level wrestling. Not come here. So you have to put your head arm over here. Okay. Put the pressure here, or here. Yeah, get my leg. So I cannot. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. That's called Sabe Panda. Yeah. See here? What's here? And I bring my, I take my leg. Yeah, because and then next for next fight, whatever he's gonna he's gonna fight good this fight, but next fight he's gonna be remembered much better. He's already good. But next fight he's gonna be super. And he, he's gonna be if he, because he's listening to me. A lot of athletes don't listen. They go halfway. And uh, my, I am thinking my, uh, he's going to be UFC champion. Because he has everything in, in him. Just, I'm going to train him. I'm going to make him champion. Today is my recovery day. It's a very important last week of my training. I have to very be careful to don't be overtrained and then don't get injured because only seven days less to my, my, to my fight. And then uh, I, I, I have a, I already done my hard training, so I don't have to push myself. Uh, right now I'm going to coffee bar, have my coffee and fruit, relax, and then go to Jiu Jitsu class with Henry and my conditioning and yoga. Yoga is the best part. I love yoga. Practice yoga. So it's an easy day, almost there. I done hard training, so I'm ready for this fight. And it's gonna be awesome. It's a beautiful day, Santa Monica, isn't it? Look at this skyline. Real, real fight, you know? Good entertaining, good fight, good win. No stealing win, I don't like that. I want to fight, to be honest. I respect myself. I hate to steal and win like tricky net. I want to like, like warrior, fight and win. So, I hope, I think two, three good win, I'm going to win the top and I am going to. I do new training. Uh, I start a new training, my uh, yoga coach, uh, Tamal. So what we do, we do training underwater, help me to visualize my fight and then breathing control and to be calm. Because if you in the, some like, try to control my breathe and things and then without control my breathe and visualize my fight basically. That's I was practicing. Trying to use your chi, your energy, in a very direct form. You're using minimal amount of effort and maximum amount of um, preciseness. You want to be accurate with your chi. You want to make it direct. You want to make it sharp. So instead of trying to fan your candle out, you're just going to use a little bit of effort to put your candle out with your energy, your chi, with direct, precise energy. So it's going to be. You're going to do Nishringa Asana. So when he's on his knees, we're just going to make fists with your hands. You're going to fr firm up your body. You're going to take a big inhale. You're going to scrunch your face. And then when you exhale, you're going to stick out your tongue, open your eyes for what they call Nishringa Asana or lion's face. Take a big inhale. Hold. Stick out your tongue, let it go. Again, inhale. Kamal, we are training all the time just to bring his mind to being very focused, very direct. 
Um, not to dwell on the things that don't matter. He's not dwelling on winning or losing. He's not w dwelling on being victorious or failing. He's just focusing on what he needs to do. And what he needs to do is just focus his energy and effort in being perfect and precise in his accuracy, um, his work ethic, uh, his yoga practice, his fighting practice, his wrestling, his striking. Everything is so precise that when he steps into the octagon, there is no question about beating his opponent because he's already beaten him before he's gotten into the octagon. He's beaten him weeks and months and months before that, mentally and physically. Um, so Kamal, we, uh, this is gonna be the last time we see each other, so um, we're doing exercises to really uh, just tie it all together, the months and months of training and practicing and really just putting into motion and effort because Kamal is a, he's a true living samurai. The way he operates and lives his life is so dedicated. Uh, he wakes up with the sun, he runs before the sun has even come up. He runs on the beach eight to ten miles, then he goes and does conditioning, he does wrestling, he does jujitsu, and then he does yoga, and then he only eats one meal a day. <laughs> Fight night is a very important, you know, uh, everybody train hard, everybody have a good coach, and then you train with your conditioning coach, with your boxing coach, your striking, you, you train your muscle three months to prepare for this fight. But fight night, you don't do those job. Now it's the mental, you have to be very calm, and mentally you must be ready. That moment is a very important to, make it best you could, you know. So, so, so many people, they do mistake, they get fast hyper, quick hyper, and then they think too much. And then they don't, they don't fight like they train. So fight night is the most, most important night, how you manage mentally, how you control your brain, your mental, very important. It's a, I think it's 100% is a mental. My opponent, take me five minutes to find my game plan, but take me two weeks to learn his name. He's young, sambo, and wrestler. He don't like strike. I'm gonna stop his rest, wrestling, strike, I mean, take down. I, I'm going to take him down. I'm going to punish him. I'm going to knock him down. In back home, when we build up house, we make a restroom maybe one mile away from house. That's the part of culture, I don't know why. Right now, the bathroom is in your room. But my hometown, we make a bathroom like far away from house. So we don't want to, we don't want to stinks come, you know, it's the culture. So winter time, we have to go bathroom, night, dark. And then the wolves waiting for you. When come out going to the bathroom? We're going to eat them this time. Honestly, we have to watch around. The wolf watching you, we run a sprint to the bathroom. And then on the way back, we have to sprint. We get lucky, the wolf don't eat us. Sometimes they catch us, they bite us. Some of my friends, honestly, the wolf bite them, you know, when they go to the bathroom. <laughs> honestly, it happened.